The construction industry in the United States is one of the largest in the world and has a record-breaking project history spanning two centuries. It employs millions of Americans, making it one of the largest contributors to economic growth. And of course, when American citizens are making significant revenue, the United States government also benefits, allowing public services to flourish. But in the Washington DC metro area, a dark secret hides among the sandstone and marble structures. Although DC itself was founded with an ambitious 10-year construction plan that built our nation's capital, it is now the site of an illegal ring of fraud and workplace misconduct that costs the area hundreds of millions of dollars every year. It's quite an epidemic, particularly here in the, in the DC area. Contractors are incentivized to come up with the lowest bid that they possibly can in order to get a project. And one way they do that is by cutting corners on how they pay their employees. The Washington DC metro area is the largest construction market in the country, but it's also the worker abuse capital of the world as well. It's not just the political capital of the world, it's the exploitation capital of the world. And it needs to end. As the scope of a project increases, subcontractors come under pressure to supply larger amounts of skilled workers. Many turn to labor brokers for this manpower, where transactions are performed in cash, usually at or below minimum wage. Labor brokers are individuals who provide manpower to so-called legitimate contractors. And they pay no taxes and they pay no insurances. They're on every large construction project and they're cheating all of us. That sub-sub, the broker, is often a very fly-by-night company that can disappear in a heartbeat, um, is very difficult to track down and to hold accountable. They know that you need money, so they're gonna play you. They're gonna get their own package of heat. So they basically say, oh, we got uh, some work out here, we paying these and these, but they don't care if they broke you. If you had an accident at the job site, it was on you. So you have to go to the doctor by yourself, and figure out how you're gonna pay. This ongoing criminal activity makes it extremely difficult for legitimate contractors who pay taxes and insurance premiums to compete. If owner were to award a project solely due to the fact that it's saving them money up front, a lot of times they don't understand that they are going to pay more in the long run due to injuries. And a lot of times just throwing bodies on, on a job is not producing the, the quality of work that people are looking for and what they're actually paying for. The amount of market share in the region currently contributing to the labor broker scam is staggering, hovering around 20% of the industry and rising. The theft is obvious, but the enforcement by the city has been non-existent. In 2018 alone, more than a billion dollars was lost to fraudulent labor practices. It's important to recognize that workers aren't the only ones who suffer from companies who illegally keep them off the books. Washington, D.C.'s City Council began to hold public hearings on tax fraud. Law-abiding construction firms are also put at a disadvantage, and the district loses on payroll taxes that would otherwise fund critical social safety net programs. D.C. has some of the strongest wage theft laws in the country, and now is the time to enforce our laws and stop the tax cheats from taking advantage of honest, hardworking taxpayers. The illegal activity that the labor brokers are involved in, it's not a union-only issue. It's an economic issue. It affects each and every one of us, and we all suffer. We all pay more because they pay nothing. What does this mean for the citizens? It means higher taxes for less public services. I know the city is losing a ton of revenue um, for school, roads, public service. Me being a taxpaying citizen, <laughs> I don't think it's fair that people could just come inside the city, especially on city-funded projects where my tax dollar go at, and cheat the system for tax dollars that should be generated back into the communities. While those employed in the construction industry and the results of their residential and commercial projects increase the strain on public services, their contributions, when labor brokers are involved, are insignificant, leaving the actual taxpayers with the bill. Misclassification hurts all of us. We want people to be able to stand on their own two feet and to get an honest day's pay for an honest day's work 
so that when they fall ill or unemployed, it doesn't fall on us. It's incumbent upon our elected officials to make sure that these crimes are treated with the severity that they deserve. We need the end users to be accountable for who's building their projects. We need this to stop. If the money was collected from the construction sites, from the labor brokers, if they were legitimate, the city would have a windfall in uncollected tax money. Lawmakers have a special obligation because they are entrusted to responsibly budget taxpayer money for improvement programs and services and ensure tax cheats don't get away with scamming the system. Tax fraud affects all of us. It's time to stand up and take action.